It's exactly two weeks to the expiration of the ultimatum given by the Nigerian Labour Congress to 32 state governors to either pay the 30,000 naira new minimum wage or risk an industrial action. Yes. And Mr. President Muhammad Buhari has warned those planning to manipulate the 2023 elections that he would not allow them to do so. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. The year might be coming to an end, but definitely not the battle for the new minimum wage by the Nigeria Labour Congress, who have issued a December 31, 2019 ultimatum to the Nigeria Labour Congress, to th by the Nigeria Labour Congress to 32 governors, either to pay the 30,000 naira new minimum wage or risk an industrial action. Now, and it has been reported that about eight of these governments are yet to constitute committees on the new minimum wage negotiations. Two weeks to the deadline, and one would wonder why. Well, joining me to have this conversation, I have Tunji Abdul Amid. He's a legal practitioner. Uh, it's good to have you join us, Tunji. Thank you very much. And of course, we have Babashola Adegui. He is a political analyst. Thank you, Babashola, for joining us. It's a pleasure. So I, I'm going to start with you, Babashola, because um, I, I know that you're not a civil servant, but um, you're a worker. Imagine if you're working below minimum wage and you have appealed to the HR department of your company over and over to increase the minimum wage and they keep saying, we will, but nothing is being done. And then you have given them an ultimatum. Do you think that your company, especially because of how important you are to them, do you think they would bolt? Um, first and foremost, I'm not just a worker. I'm also a union leader in my place of work. Aha, interesting. So I have a better understanding of what you are talking about. Here we go. From the analogy you gave, once workers are demanding for minimum wage and there is an agreement between the union and the management, mm -hmm. it is the responsibility of that a responsible management mm -hmm. to obey... Underline the word responsible. Yes. Mm -hmm. To obey such agreement or else the workers with down tools. Okay. And for workers to down tools, it now depends on the leadership of the union. In Nigeria, I doubt if we have strong union leaders in some of these areas, so-called... Uh, how do you mean? We have the NUC, NUT, we have the uh, NLC, we have the NNLC, or the, the, the new NLC, the other faction. We have all of these we, people. Let me tell you, what, what brought about all these factions is all because the government is interested in labor union. And all the government needs to do is to break a strong union into pieces. And that is why they can't have one voice. A common voice to speak on behalf of all the union. Now we have the ULC, the ULC. We, have, we have the TUC, we have the NLC, and underneath this are different unions from different organizations that make up this. So the TUC cannot talk on behalf of NLC. Likewise, NLC cannot say anything on behalf of ULC. If there's no uh, unity of purpose, in a case such as this, where we know that it affects all and sundry across boards, whether you're under the Trade Union Congress or whether you're at Tawu, wherever you belong, it, it, it affects all of us. It then how do you get a government to agree to terms and conditions that you place before them? Well, it depends on the body that is actually representing the civil servant. I think the one representing the civil servant is NLC, if mm -hmm. I remember very well. Yes. It's NLC. So it is, it is, it, it is, it is, it is the duty of the NLC to actually speak on behalf of the civil servant and enter into the agreement with the government, which I think that has been done in respect of minimum wage. But there is a problem now. The problem is how serious are the leaders of these union bodies? If the union bodies are very weak. I'm very sorry. The oldest governors, all of them, we scared through. Nothing will happen. It will just be a noise at the end of the day. Most especially if they are money conscious, position conscious, power conscious. It's just a matter of enticing them with, what they, with their own interest. In the past, we know of a, a lot of union leaders that will go with a portfolio at the 
detriment of the of their followers. And at the end of the day, everybody will find their own way. That's why in Nigeria, whenever the NLC called strike, everybody sit down at home. Only will you see people that will obey the call for strike. And this is because the the, the trust we usually had then is no longer there. So for me, it depends on the leader of the NLC in respective state or the civil servant that we that that we ensure um, it is it, 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 that is only one thing that makes sure okay the strike will eventually hold in those states or not. If not, it's just noise. Tunji, um, the several states. There's Cross River. There's uh, Kwara. There's uh, Anambra. There's uh, Ogun. There's Oshun. There's Plateau. And I'm going to give you just brief headers. The TUC in Cross River say they're in the dark. They have no idea what the government is going to do about this. They say everything is in limbo. Um, I'm quoting the Trade Union Congress leader, Claxon O'Too. Now, in Quara, the NLC there is saying that um, the government showed uh, that they were going to establish a negotiation committee, but then nothing happened after that. Now, in Anambra, the state chapter of the NLC told um, newsmen that he had written to the state government to constitute a committee for the new minimum wage. But labor in the state had also constituted its own committee, waiting on government uh, in, respect, in the respect that, you know, they wrote to government asking that government should constitute their own committee. So there's going to be a liaison. There's not been anything whatsoever. The River State NLC chairperson, Beatrice Tubo, uh, said she sent a letter to the government on the need to establish a negotiation committee after October 18th agreement. Uh, but they're saying that... Um, there's nothing happening. And I could go on. They all have the same story. <laughs> I don't know if we could go with what he has said, that trade unionism is half past dead, or what exactly is the problem of state governments? How difficult can it be to uh, want, establish a negotiation committee? I want to agree with Tim to an extent that uh, our labor leaders in this country are no longer vibrant. They are no longer seen as uh, they are not they don't fear anybody anymore the government don't fear them and the government has succeeded in making sure that uh, they are now broken to pieces that they'll be able to they won't have a one one for it to, to speak again you know the the i have said it i said it since the time that they signed this negotiation of uh, or the, the or the signing of the tax that there will be issue paying the money because uh, most they don't even are not fiber they are not vibrant they can't they can't they can't they can't they can't pay the money the 18,000 minimum wage is still outstanding. There are so there are a lot of uh, what's it called uh, outstanding salary and allowances that have not been paid regarding the 18,000 minimum wage. Now that we have uh, 30,000, most of this state. Let me talk about my state, which is Kwara State. You know they have not be able to. They, they say they don't. They, nothing is on, on ground. As far as I'm concerned, Kwara State, since the governor came into power, nothing has, has been on ground. He has not. He has not gotten any. We have not seen any direction as to where he is going to. The only thing I see that he moved from one place to another trekking from one uh, jungle to another jungle. I've not seen it. In fact, it was just three days ago. Was it, or was it, was it Thursday? It was on Thursday that the commission, the cabinet was constituted. So I, I think uh, without even the, those uh, cabinet in, in place, it would be difficult uh, for them to set up any committee regarding the negotiation of the minimum wage. And even if when you set up committee regarding, minimum, uh, regarding the minimum wage, how would, it, how would the money be paid? We don't know yet. So those are the issues they are, they are trying to while away time. That, I, that is the reason why that, that's what I'm doing. I'm curious, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I want to play the devil's advocate. The, these governments are claiming that they are not viable, the states are not viable, and you have these many people in service, and you're still, there's still more people being absorbed into the service, yet you're unable to pay the previous minimum wage. And we have a full house of assembly in all of these states who have all kinds of benefits. If the cost of government or governance in these states are that expensive, have they sort of ways of reducing that cost to ameliorate the sufferings of the people who actually put in the work in their states? No, not only in the state, even in the federation. If all the, the, the salaries well, but, but the federal about, government seems, the body the, language of the federal government, and this is not to stand, I'm just saying, but their body language seems different from the states. They were the first to accept the body language, wage. but not payments. You know, in law, in law, that's all called, so that's all called, that's all called men's trial, that's all called actus reus. If those two things are not present in law, you cannot commit an offense. Men's means intention. Actus reus means physical acts. 
So what you have seen the federal government do is just intention. I've not seen the physical act. There's no, there's nothing, nothing as far as I'm concerned. So you're concerned, saying they're all on the same boat? You're saying they're until all on the they same boat? Until they implement that a payment, until that payment is being implemented, that's when I will, I will know that they are doing something. You know, most of these states, they are just, they are not, like I said, and I will still repeat it, they are not viable. They are finding it difficult to pay the earlier 18,000 naira, and now there is an increment. How, how would they go about it? Is what they are thinking of. How, would, how do, how, where do we get money? I don't know how much has been generated in my, in my own So what the is the solution? Because we can't months. keep saying the states are not viable. They cannot pay salaries. What is the way forward? You have so many people in service, and yet you're unable to pay their salaries. What is the solution? I, I tell you, you the, the, labor, the, the workers forward. are at the mercy of the government, of the governors now, or, the, or let me say government in general. You know, and at the, at the mercy in the sense that, look, even if they are able to pay one, two, three, four, four, four there will still be an issue thereafter as to outstanding and there, there, no, this, this, there's no, we are, we are borrowing more money. That will come with its own, its own, its own effect on the, on, on, on the allocation that will be going to the states and other things. You know, the, we, we are borrowing uh, 30, 30 billion dollars. I, I, I can't remember the amount now. And if, that, that will have its effect on the, uh, what will go to state thereafter. You know, and most states rely on the federal uh, allocation in, in, in running their state. Like in my state, I don't know how much we generate internally, what we have been generated. It was improved there at, sometimes in the uh, to, before 2019 election, we had that about an improvement, improvement in the in the IGR, but notwithstanding, there is nothing on ground, that much, much are not on ground to, to justify what has been uh, generated. And even like I, now, the government in, in power now has, is yet to settle down in most states. Ogun State just they just they just announced the name of the commissioner just a few days ago, and they are still fighting over it. So those those issues are there. Those are, okay. that are the issues that will not allow. But those, despite all these issues. Those in political, those in political, uh, political class are not even affected by any payment. And, that, and that's my next question to Babashala. Babashala, I'm not great at maths, so I'm guessing that's why I'm on this job. <laughs> but if we do the maths and we calculate the money that the political class, which is 1% of the 100 and something million Nigerians that we have, can we not reduce that by half and see what we can do about the workers' situation in all of these states. Because when the states are complaining about not being viable, the governments are not necessarily complaining about it. When the workers are unable to feed, the government house still feeds. So where does service to the people come in here? Well, um, unfortunately in Nigeria, there is no true service to the people. Really? Yes. There is no true service to the people. In Nigeria, as of today, everybody is serving his own pocket, most especially those in a political position. And what do I mean by this? Before getting to the position, they will clamor for reduction, they will clamor for everything, agitation from up and down, do this, do that. But immediately to get into the position, then they will sing another song in a, in a different tune entirely. That's when they will uh, tell you, I will not have the understanding what is actually going on with the government. You know, if you do this, it's going to affect this. You know, everybody is just after his own pocket and that is just the truth there. Now, nevertheless, we have people working for the government and these are the civil servants. The, the civil servant is the engine room of any government in the whole world. So these people have to be serviced well, their welfare package must not be denied. They, they, there must be improvement in their standard of living. But unfortunately, the people that will determine that are those who have been elected to position. And these are the same people who are already, who are there to recoup what they already spent during the election or before the election. Because in Nigeria, election is not, it's just it's, it's an investment that they must recoup. And mind you, the same civil servant before the election were the people running after this politician, set to loss, drumming, drumming, uh, what's it called, beating drums, collecting coins from one corner and other from all these politicians to vote them in. And like I said earlier, once they are voted in, the first thing they will go after is how to recoup what they have already invested in the election. That's number one. Number two, the IGR of each state, if you look at the IGR of each state, you will discover that we are far, far behind. 
Let's look at 1999 up to this year, this uh, 20 years that we started the true democracy with tightening interruption. The question is, what has happened to most of these states in Nigeria? All of them, are, most of them are depending on the federal government. They are waiting for federal allocation. You go to some local government in some states, the only time you see them in the office is at the end of the month. Or maybe Friday or whatever, whenever they have money as they come to the local government to let's go there for our home share. That's when you see them. But the truth of the matter is if the governments have been focused on thinking about the present, the short-term plan, medium plan, and long-term plan, I can tell you most states will no longer be depending on the federal allocation. But the, 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 the laziness, is it, can I call it laziness? Or they are unconcerned. I, I don't know. I just want to come in there. Who encouraged this cap in hand attitude of ours towards the federal government? This feeding bottle, permit me to use that word, Is, attitude of ours, or uh, states. Actually, who, who encouraged it? Actually, not that we encouraged Our it. System wasn't okay. The system is the unitary system we are practicing. So why are we complaining? Because, because it's a situation whereby. I have a thing that can give money to, to my state, and then they say that thing will belo belongs to, to the federal, federal government. government. You know, people will say, okay, well, if I even do all the wala, how much will they give me? Maybe it's just a small thing. But then the me. allocation and, uh, does not, not only anything. go to states who, where the money comes from, it goes everywhere. That's what, I'm, that's what I want to say. I said, I said some state will say, look, me that, that, that I, I got this thing from my state. I don't all the wala to our first state and to make it uh, materialize. We all share it together. Even the state that has not been getting anything was also shared. In fact, some state that has not been getting anything may even share more than you, to an extent. Yes. You, you, you understand? So you will be, you will know, you will be, you will say, ah, what is the wala in this? Let me just relax and see what that, yeah, we will manage it. If, if, if today, every state is allowed to annex what is in the state, and that thing becomes its own, and the whatever that they will generate, they will only give it the federal priority or whatever, you, that will be changed. But we pay a lot of lip service to states becoming viable or the viability of states. Another question I want to ask is, if we know that states are not viable or will not be as viable as others, why do we keep clamoring for the creation of these states? And now there are states who are unable to stand on two feet. <laughs> why? And there are still people who are still clamoring for more states as we speak. You know, one thing I've noticed about us is this. Even if we have the chance, we can clamor for my own family to, to have a state. <laughs> the more state you have, but is the it more not, you have. Exactly. But, but, but could that also, I'm asking the same question again, could that also not be because or premised on the fact that everybody's seeing that the government is giving us feeding bottles, filling it up with milk, so maybe if I start my own state, I get to benefit something from the federal government? No, because most people see government uh, as, as, not, as not service. They see government as a means of getting, uh, uh, improve your profile, get more money and, and be comfortable. They see, they, if they see it as service, you know, the, the, the issue is that, look, once I, once I get my local government, once I get my state, there is likely root of uh, me becoming governor in that state or somebody else becoming this and that, there will be more people who will be engaged in, in, the, in politics in that particular uh, arena and then it will be reduced. Like, for example, now, if Lagos is, 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 is uh, sharing into two now, one Lagos, another one is another name. Lagoon. You know that will be that will be that, that another person will not become a godfather in another in another area. Another area. You know those issues. We know we are selfish. That's just the problem. That, that, this country. Yeah. That selfish <laughs> interest is what is our problem in this country. Until we believe that, look, we are here in this country, or we are in there in this power, or we are in this government to serve people and not to make money for ourselves or not to be comfortable alone. That, that is when we will have development. But if we continue to operate the way we are operating, nothing will happen. So the way forward, because. January 1 is going to hit us like uh, the usual thing, you know. It's either it's a strike action or it's one deadly thing that's going to happen. It won't last for more than two days or three days. But, but, but then again, we're going to lose money. Just like the electricity guys went on strike, we lost so much money in one day. We never do the math, do we? So January 1 is going to come around. Mm -hmm. And of course, if the government doesn't do anything, there will be a strike action. And they might go on for two, three days and there will be a, a shutdown of activities. Yeah, How do we try to avoid these things in the future? Because we all talked about all the problems. What is the way forward? Because there has to be a solution. 
Well, the first way forward is for the governors to invite the labor union leaders, have discussion with them, negotiation. If you can't pay 30,000, come out. Yes. The union leaders will definitely... There's no, there, you, there's no way you, can, you, you can't come out. You can't pay below 30,000. It's a law. I know it's a law. So why but there is a way you can do your mathematics around it. So all you just need to do is to have an understanding with the union leaders. And everybody sit down, guys, <laughs> this 30,000, this is the problem. We have the social number of civil servants in the whole state, maybe 20,000. And we look at it, that means the whole revenue for the state is gone. And we need to do the road. So you guys, that is the way you talk to them. I'm sorry, like, Babashala. Uh, I, I like this strategy that you're trying to talk about, but I don't approve of it. And so I'm going to ask, when they come up with these ideas or numbers, and then maybe for some to score political points, do they do the necessary digging, the feasibility studies? They, do they do the math? Do they realize how much well, that, that's, that's what they're trying to do now. Well, no, 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 but this is medicine after death because it's now, it is a law no, now. No, so, no, no. What, what did they uh, Hold on. Okay. Before we changed it from 18 to 30, why didn't we have this conversation? Why are we having it now when you have already approved of it? It's time to pay, and then we're realizing that, oh, if you pay 30,000 Naira as minimum wage, then, oh, the whole budget for the, the year is gone just for salaries. Are, are you aware that it is a law that our minimum wage must be increased every five years? And that's what I'm saying. And they, now that it's the due diligence when they were discussing, they, are, they, only, they, only, they only agree on the minimum wage. What they are working on is a, is a corresponding, uh, what's it called, adjustment. Of the, of, of, the, of the new increment. And that's what we're still saying the in same thing. Yes, I know. They, if, even if they look at the consequences or the likely cause of it, there is no way they will go, because it's the law. They have to increase or, or the minimum wage, and they have to do something. So how you, how you, you have to think outside the bus to, to know how to get more money to pay this money. And we are even talking, what, 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 sometimes when, when we talk about this uh, minimum wage of 18, or the issue of money, or this money, uh, most states that I know, they use their allocation to service only the civil servants. And they won't be able to do another project again, apart from the civil servants. And we don't have only civil servants in, in, in the state. There are other people who are not civil servants who are do other things. And that, that's why sometimes most of them would say, look, if I pay your salary alone, I won't be able to do another project. But like, I, like you said, you, are, it's a, it's a, you, are, you raise a vital uh, point. Why, would, why do they not consider the consequences or the likely consequences of this uh, adjustment or, the, or this uh, uh, 30 million, million wage? Because I, I think they do that because they don't have any choice at that time. They, they, to, they, have to, they have to increase yeah. at that time. So, and there's no way. They, you remember the, the neighbor were even asking for about 60,000 or something thousand. Dollars. So they have to come to a, to a point and say, look, we have to increase. How they will get the money now is the problem. So they have to go and look for it. Because they know how to get money for their own political uh, appointees and whatever. They, they, we have never had any of them talk about the issue of uh, we have not been paid our salary, our salary, our salary and of this. But and again, that. talking about this whole issue of payments, the budget uh, for next year has already been presented by Mr. President. But we also borrow to service those budgets. We borrow to do everything. Does it mean that we're not making money or we're not coming up with ideas that, we can, that can make us generate monies internally and not just be dependent on the fund? It bits me, and I, I, I'm asking these questions not because I don't know, but I'm trying to understand the logic behind these borrowing, these excessive borrowings that we go into. Well, until government start reducing the cost of governance, you know, that was, the political appointees, the number of heads, the, for example, the $37 billion to renovate National Assembly, you get, and uh, talking about the, uh, the VP's our residential building that has to be renovated with this amount of money, when the government starts thinking towards making the government, making the nation better than the method, I can tell you the cost of governance will reduce. And what are those things we need? The vital things, the government should focus on the major things, how to generate revenue. And it's not that they don't know how to generate revenue, they know. Sometimes the government shies away from taking responsibility or taking the lead of making more, uh, what's it called, generating more revenue. For example, those that are not paying tax, they are big men. Government has mentioned this several times, the FIRS, uh, FIRS has said this several times, only 15% are paying taxes out of the, those that are to be paying. In other words, you know that 85% are not paying. Have the, have, what have you done about the 85% are not paying? 
that's one of and I'm very sure you are even if we chase if 85 percent are not paying the big boys among them the, those that are connected those that have the power influential you will not go uh, uh, after them why because these are the people who are in one way or the other work for your own uh, for you to be in that position and you don't want to so the government needs to do something about that that's number one number two we need to look at some other things like maybe looking at our export duties looking at our import duties you get my point yes i agree with the vat 2.5 percent honestly we are paying the lowest in the court but if we are to compare that with what we are uh, the, the income of the civil servant it is far far uh, it will be very difficult for the food servant to pay such. And you know, there are so many ways that the government... So the government needs to do a lot of things. Now they have introduced the stamp duties, whereby we're paying 15 naira. Whereby we're paying 15 naira. Is it 15 naira? Yeah, 15 naira mm -hmm. on every withdrawal you do, maybe above 1,000 or 10,000. Yes, making life difficult. You get, we can't shy away from it. But the truth is, the government needs to work. If the government is ready, they need to work on the, uh, uh, the on, on the corruption that has eaten okay. deep in this uh, country. I, I think the government the governments are making money. That's what I'm concerned. The way they one are sentence we need to go. We need to go. Okay. <laughs> we need to go. Unfortunately, we do not have time. We have to go for a quick break. Uh, Baba Tunde, um, um, Baba Shalai, beg your pardon, Adigui, and of course, Tunji Abdul Hamid are going to be in the studio uh, with me when we come back. Of course, we'll be talking about something else. Mr. President has a plan for 2023 elections. Stay with us. <laughs> 